And we're live. <laughs> Three, two, one. better at that like we've, like we've, uh, like we've never been away mate exactly right exactly <laughs> i'm gonna to touch on that actually because i realized that neither of us actually posted anything right. to, to say um so uh yeah let's go let's get the last one out hopefully <laughs> no chance <laughs> yeah i know all right so ready when you are hello and good morning uh, and welcome to another episode of the cryptid ramblers podcast as always i'm your co-host callum and uh, thankfully returning um, is uh, your other co-host, Scott. Yeah, you're lucky. I know, right? You're lucky I'm returning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. How you doing, man? You good? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I've been really good. good. Um, it's been it's been a stressful couple of weeks. Yeah, I bet. a very, very stressful couple of weeks. We're yeah, moving house and uh, work yeah. really, really kicking off now. It's good. Um, being self-employed and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, good type of busy to have, oh, I yeah, guess, for the wor- most part. Worst yeah. problems to have. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it's just still um, takes its toll, doesn't oh, it? Man. <laughs> unreal, unreal. I don't think I've ached as much as I have in the recent weeks without a drop of alcohol. Wow, that's that's <laughs> how bad it's getting. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> but well, once you meet your, once you hit your mid thirties, that's it. It's all downhill it's from all, there. Yeah, it? quickly as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah. I suppose just to um feed off of that really mm. and uh, and to uh, you know let the listeners know i guess um if anyone has noticed <laughs> there has been a uh, <laughs> i love the way you put that if anyone if anyone's, has, noticed, if anyone's you know, actually listening well don't assume you know <laughs> <laughs> but there has obviously been a abnormally long break um between um episodes and yeah so that, that was um yeah we'll see a, a decision that we made to sort of give ourselves um you know, a bit of a break um, over the sort of the Easter period. Um, I was I was away for a week. Um, I don't mm. know, Scott. You had you know obviously work and packing up your house and yeah. and all that stuff. And it just seemed like a sort of advantageous opportunity, really, to yeah, just take a step back and yeah, just just to sort of have a break from it. And, and also because of the uh, subject that we're going to be jumping into, <clears throat> um, as everyone will you know eventually realize it there's a hell of a lot to it yeah. um you know real world legend myth folklore mm. stories literature pop culture like it's got oh, the lot it's yeah. got the lot and you could deep dive into any element and quite easily spend hours upon hours falling down you know rabbit holes which um mm. you know is what i've more or less done for the last sort of three weeks <laughs> yeah. um that's to sort of claw myself back to you know sort of keep on track so um yes yeah, so that's why we've been um we've been away but um yeah, pleased to say we're we're back on track and um, yeah, ready to sort of kick off um, the, the the podcast again, yeah, which you know quite um, you know aptly as well will be, from what I understand, it will be a uh, sort of little mini series, won't you? Of uh, yeah, yeah, of, we've, we've been we've been talking about this for a little while, like um, the various different monster movie sort yeah. of cryptids, you know. Right. So um, we'll we'll be looking at you know you will see the thumbnail. So yep, you'll this see. one we're looking at the vampire. <laughs> we are. Um, we'll, we'll be looking at the werewolf or wolfman. Yeah. Um, I think we'll, we'll touch on things like the curse of the mummy. Yeah, um, we'll do sort of mummies. Like and the and Hollywood kind of movie, and, like the old yeah. school golden age of Hollywood movies. What they were trying to do with the Tom Cruise movie when they by creating the yeah. um, monster the dark universe. universe wasn't yeah, it? basically, yeah. We'll, we'll more or less touch on all of the you know various creatures and, and cryptids that would have been you know, kind of within that. So it was, um, yeah, as you say, we've, we've been talking about it for a while, um, but it's, it's kind of been by accident that we've kind of fallen into it a bit sooner than I think I thought we were going to, but yeah, well, obviously we'll, off the back of the previous two episodes, at least, exactly, um, yeah. you know, with uh, Chupacabra, you know, and the Gargoyle, for example, vampirism is, you know, a characteristic in, you know, both of those. So it got to a point when you and I were talking about it and it just felt like a natural yeah. sort of progression to just seems like to it's go the right, right into time it. to get into it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that is indeed what, uh, what we will be doing. Um, we've sort of jumped ahead a little bit. So, uh, 
go through some of the obligations before we uh, <laughs> before okay, we crack yeah. on. Yeah. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, as always, we've got uh, we've got our shout outs, and and of course we have to start with our beloved patrons, uh, Justin and James. Um, thank you as always for the continued support. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thanks for sticking with us, especially for our little hiatus. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, remember, guys, as always, if you want to. You know, join those two guys. Um, you can do, and be part of this uh, illustrious supporters club. <laughs> um, just uh, head to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast, um, and uh, yeah, you'll see we've got a couple of tiers um, available mm-hmm. with uh, yeah with some good perks. Um, the two tiers are priced at four and six pounds respectively, plus VAT. Plus VAT. Need to you know, need to get that in there. Um, you'll get early access to each bi-weekly um, episode, a personal shout-out, as you've heard. Um, and if you're part of the top tier, then you'll also see the uh, video recording um, of each podcast as well. So, uh, yeah, you get to hear our dulcet tones and uh, see how beautiful look at our mugs. mugs. <laughs> Beautiful's a strong word, but I'll go with it. <laughs> So uh, I'll speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, hopefully there's plenty of reasons for you to come and uh, yeah support your favourite podcast. Um, as you've also probably seen, um, we've got our merch store um, mm-hmm. with the guys that uh, buy that merch. Um, so yeah, you can head over to uh, to that website and take a look at you know some of the designs that we've got. Mostly what we're kind of noting as uh, season one. Um, sort of yep. designs so um, yeah hopefully you'll see something there that uh, takes your fancy if you head to buy that merch.co.uk um, you can go to the podcast merch section on the uh, toolbar and select cryptid ramblers um, luckily I think we're, we're still top of the list so yep. you shouldn't miss us love that alphabet uh, absolutely <laughs> um, failing that you can simply type in buy that merch.co.uk forward slash cryptid ramblers and it will take you straight to our um, sort of section of the uh of the store um uh and i think that's it isn't it i've not done it for a while so i've <laughs> so, <laughs> you've completely fallen off the bandwagon I this, have, you? yeah well yeah it's it's more, especially with the cool. intros yeah <laughs> especially with these it threw me off but uh oh, yeah no, they're, they're the um yeah that's their obligations they're the obligations <laughs> we're giving the update about yeah. about the hiatus so we've yeah, covered that cool. and uh yeah they say we, we sort of jumped the gun a little bit didn't we with uh Sort of, uh, uh, sort of announcing what we were. Well, I think. Well, I say jumping the gun, people would have seen I think the, the thumbnail jig was by up now. But they see the thumbnail on the <laughs> yeah, title, yeah. Cal. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. Um, so, uh, yeah, unless, um, unless you've got anything, uh, mate, we can oh, man. jump straight in. Let's just jump straight in. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's do it. So, as um, yeah, as we've already said, we are going to be diving into the, the vampire. Um, mm. And obviously, you and I know that everyone else will know what they think, you know, a vampire is yeah. or, you know, kind of its origins. And Well, it's got, you know what, it, because it's such a, a strong part of um, popular culture now, it has become very much a subjective phenomenon. Mm. So you've got all these various different types of vampire yeah. in literature and movie and, and TV yeah. and everything. In Hollywood especially and, and oh, TV, yeah. so many different iterations. You've got like the horror vampire, you've got the romanticised vampire, you've got the hero vampire. Yeah. You just, there's uh, the protector. Mm. There's, there's all of this stuff that, that's out there that what I find really interesting is going back to the actual old stories of vampire. As I was saying to you as before we started <laughs> recording that usually I try and find like the more modern sort of accounts and, and stories. And, yeah, and that's stuff right. Like yeah. And I was coming up against vampire porn everywhere. <laughs> mate, it was unreal. It was like some of the stuff out there. Oh, just mate, like, I can only imagine. It's strong. Oh, like, like I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm part of a uh, uh, sort of a book club that's you know, online. And yeah, yeah some of the, the fan fiction you have to, you know, you have to read in there or that, you know, I have to yeah, I mean, sort of review and stuff. And you sort of read it and you think, God Almighty! I mean, I, I've 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 just been a fan of the vampire sort of thing, and I've read oh, loads likewise, of various different yeah. novels and watched all different films. I've got so many different. Mm. I've got like a top ten films and vampire yeah. films are on <laughs> yeah. there, you know. So it's like, yeah, but I, yeah. I used to read, um, for instance, like the Anita Blake series, right? And yep. sure, there's people of our generation, mm. our sort of age, that would know. Yeah, that. should do. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it's brilliant. It starts off really great, yeah. like proper. 
sort of crime, um, crime drama yeah. and horror. Mm. And then <laughs> probably about book 10. <laughs> yeah. So there's a long... It starts to run out of... <laughs> well, it starts getting a bit like... <laughs> bit Mills and Boone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit, yeah was it like Reader's Digest for yeah. the over 40s? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah. It starts getting really strong. Like there's, uh, there's yeah. lots of... Um, wet work there's lots of there's a bit of beef oh, oh thank you there's a bit of uh, bestiality in it and I'm like whoa Jesus, okay I'm right. dropping drop me out now really yeah, just yeah. a little bit too strong I bore it I bore it <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, I was finding lots of stuff like that online yeah. like it was weird it was so like if you search the wrong the wrong sort of thing then yeah I think that's where you or the right or the right depending on what you're mm. after yeah that's. I think that's where you can end up um, yeah sort of coming unstuck but uh, yeah I mean I, I couldn't not that I'd I sort of tried too much because that wasn't my focus, but mm. yeah, I, I couldn't see anything. Um, I couldn't really see much in the way of um, anything, you know, too modern, which it, you know, unless it was, you know, complete, you know, sort of fiction, mm. um, you know, unlike a lot of the others that we've, you know, looked at, you know, it's been like two or three years ago where there's been a, a sighting or, you know, yeah. an interaction, but it seems like with, with this, it has been sort of confined to kind of myth and, and folklore, mm. um, you know, really. Um, well, I've, I have found one <coughs> that excuse me um, has links to thousands of years ago, all yep. the way up to the seventies. Right. Okay. Apparently, he made an appearance. Oh wow! On French TV in the seventies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know you're talking. Yeah. Okay. There we yeah, go. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, drop our little breadcrumb. Out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. No. That'd be. Um, yeah. No. That'd be a good one when we uh, when we get onto it. So. Um, but yeah, I suppose to kind of jump in, um, you know, with our, yeah, our sort of usual stuff. Um, and I know we always say this, but for anyone that doesn't know, <laughs> uh, a vampire is uh, a creature from folklore um, that uh, survives by feeding on the the essence of the, li- the living, um, i.e. their blood. Um, in European folklore, um, in particular, vampires are undead creatures um, that often visit loved ones um, and would cause, you know, mischief or death in, in their sort of neighbourhood. This is coming from more from like Eastern Europe, mm. uh, like sort of Romania and, and that sort of, uh, that sort of side. Um, and, yeah, they were just basically just cause mischief um, and, you know, possibly even death um, w- where they grew up, basically. Yeah, it sounds um, like they, they weren't really that much of an issue sort of thing. It was like... Not, it was just kind of accepted, really. Yeah. It was like, oh, you're back. Right, so. <laughs> it's like that, that blase. Oh, you're, you're back. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, yeah, okay. Cool. Get yeah, back no. in that hole. Yeah, yeah. Back you go. Back o- in the hole. Off you fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of you know, sort of description, you know, as you've said, there's various you know iterations, but mm. you know, early kind of descriptions would basically you know show them as being you know obviously humanoid. You know, they'd wear you know sort of shrouds uh, and often. Uh, this was an interesting one. They'd be described as bloated um, with a dark expression or emotion on their face, um, which is obviously, you know, somewhat different to the modern sort of 19th century description mm. of being like gaunt and pale. Yeah. Um, you know, it almost seems like the original description was like the complete opposite. Mm. Um, Do you, that's something that I found with um, the more historical sort of um, descriptions of it. it. It seemed like it was more of a ghoulish sort of creature. Oh, than- yeah. Like, the, yeah sort of demonic, monstrous kind of... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. as opposed to, as you say, the, the romanticised um, kind of romance version almost that we Oh, it's like that a 19th get. century sort of thing, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, now, the, the term vampire was originally popularised in the 18th century, uh, again, in, in uh, sort of uh, Western Europe, um, when accounts from uh, the Balkans claimed that corpses were being staked... Um, and and because people were being accused of uh, vampirism, which was yeah, obviously killing killing people and drinking their blood, drinking yeah, the blood. more or less, yeah. Um, now, of course, there are some you know different names for vampire depending on you know where you are, sort of in the world. Um, but uh, you've got the uh, Striga in Albania. Um, she's a, a vampire witch um, who feeds on the blood of infants whilst they sleep. Mm. Um, so lovely, uh, lovely woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
in uh, in Greece, there's the uh, Vorvalekas. Excuse pronunciation, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not Greek. And so I, I, it all I, sounds Greek to me. All man. sounds Greek. <laughs> all played, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure I've butchered it. Um, but they, uh, yeah, they're, they're similar to um, a vampire, but they will actually eat flesh. Um, mm. You know, in, in, instead of just drinking the blood of their victims, that's, that's more kind of cannibalism, I guess. Yeah. Um, now, the, the most, uh, well, what I think is the most well-known variation um, is the Strigoi um, from Romania. Yeah. Um, and they are believed to be uh, troubled spirits risen from the grave. <clears throat> uh, and it is believed that they can also like go invisible and uh, turn into an animal. Um, and I think that's... The whole shape-shifting thing. Exactly. Is, I was just going to say, that's that where the whole, sort of, you know, Chupacabra, Wind, Wendigo kind of... Um, Link uh, mm. sort of came in with you know those characteristics. Oh, so, oh, okay, yeah, I gotcha. Um, but yeah, the the, the shape shifting. Yeah, because um, even like Bram Stoker's Dracula, he is a he's a shape shifter. He can change yeah. into a wolf. Yeah. Um, which which might explain yeah why we've got this is um, fascination in pop culture of there being a link between vampires and werewolves. Um, yeah. Yeah, which exactly. They always seem to be in, intrinsically. Yeah, if you've got connected. one, you've got the other sort exactly, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and, and yeah, funny you should say that because yeah, it's it's um, it's it's kind of believed or or known that Bram Stoker's Dracula was actually a modern representation mm. of the Strigoi. Yeah. So yeah, he's, so yeah, yeah. And to go on further from that, the Strigoi yeah. was the choice that Guillermo del Toro made when he made the Strain. Yes, that's when right. He put that into publication. That's a great series as well. I love it was, that. yeah. I think like many, like many series, I think nowadays it, it got to a point where it probably should have stopped a bit sooner yeah. than you know it, than it what it like, did. Um, but it, it, yeah, yeah, you're right. It was like it wasn't like this this outbreak of this weird creature virus yeah. worm thing. Yeah, you know, it, which it was really good the way it started off with the the, the, the plane and plane and, and everything else like that. Sick passenger, and that's yeah. how it kind of spread I mean, and stuff. But the series has been yeah. out for quite a while now, so yeah. anyone that has watched it will know what happened. Yeah, there shouldn't be any spoilers at this point. No, yeah, no, but if you haven't watched it, guys, go and yeah, go watch it. It's a good watch. It's, yeah, no, yeah, it is. It's on uh, Netflix, I think. Is it Netflix? Is it? I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, yeah, early sort of folklore um, belief of sort of the vampire came from the initial ignorance of the lack of understanding of how the human body deals with decomposition, um, mm. obviously, especially obviously after death. Um, creating the, the sort of the vampire was the easiest way to rationalise this. So instead of understanding how bodies decompose and what, what happens after death, yeah. at the time it was just easy to just put a name to it or to give it a condition or something. So if it started to happen again, they could say, oh yeah, no, it's just, yeah, they're just a vampire. <laughs> yeah, the, the perfect example of that was um, it was Mercy Brown, um, yep. from, from that, Rhode yeah. Island, um, which yeah, which I spoke to you about on on Thursday, mm. and, and th- that's probably the best example of that particular like, right. of, the example of what you're saying yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. Because ba- basically, what happened with that guy is that uh, Mercy Brown she died in 1892 at the age of 19, and she wow. died of consumption. Um, or tuberculosis, <laughs> basically. Oh, okay. There seemed to be a bit of an outbreak at the time. Now, the the modern understanding, at, say modern, at that yeah. time, yeah. at the time, uh, yeah. the understanding of, of the vampire was that they would rise and they would attack their own mm. family members. Yeah. Um, now, she had died and a, a lot of other people started to die around her and like she was like the first one to go. Mm. So they thought, right, okay, well, this is a bit odd. Mm. And at this point she hadn't been buried. So she was still in like um, a cold store. Yeah. And so when they went to have a look at her body, obviously the cold store had stopped, it had slowed the decom- yeah. Pre- decomposition. Preserved her to an exactly, extent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with their superstition and everything, they, they yeah. really did fear it. So what they did was they chopped her head off. Mm. Um, they staked her heart. Yeah. Cut out of her heart, yeah. burnt it, mm. and then for some reason they put it in a drink and made her brother drink it. Because yeah, that seems like the and guess logical what logical thing to do. He died. He died <laughs> a couple of days later. <laughs> like is yeah. uh, and apparently that he was suffering from tuberculosis. Yeah. Um. So I, I would assume that their thinking was that oh if he's dying because of um the, the, what they thought was the curse of the vampire, yeah. then by burning the vampire's heart and then making him drink the vampire's heart, 
that should cure him. Um, yeah. Obviously, it didn't. Obviously not. No. Good work, as always, science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, science is uh, is always getting better, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Thank, uh, thankfully. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. Um, as long as it's uh, free and open and... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not paid for. No, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I suppose now, feeding off that, I guess, a, a little bit, there is a, um, a disorder known as um, porphyria, um, which uh, amongst the... Uh, you know, a whole host of uh, sort of issues um, can specifically cause a skin irritation, including blisters when exposed to sunlight. Yeah. Um, now there was an outbreak of this in um, 1985 um, and the, the, and the term vampire was widely used in the media um, as, uh, as the reason you know, wow. for that, it was obviously discredited. <laughs> not where, where, not long where was afterwards. The was it in like Europe or, <clears throat> or something? Was it? I'll be honest. I didn't make a note of where the outbreak was. Oh, okay. um, and to be honest, I can't even remember if the article noted where it was. Um, so, so I don't know. In truth, I okay. Um, That's interesting. That, that like yeah. an outbreak of the what, so what was Porf- it? porphyria. Porphyria. Uh, but yeah. Um, and there was an outbreak. Yeah, not not that long ago. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was you know like sort of vomiting. Diarrhea, oh, like a viral bleeding, like sort of bleeding thing. from you know eyes, nose, and and whatever else, and a load of other sort of complications. But the one that sort of seemed to grab the media attention was the blistering of the skin yeah. when reacting when to, to sunlight, like UV light, or something like that. Yeah. And obviously, That's weird. you know, as we know, one of the you know sort of characteristics of vampires is that they're not day walkers. So as soon as this started happening, day walker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The um, the media jumped on it and said, "Yeah, it's a vampire outbreak," but. Yeah, obviously then science stepped in and was like, no, no. <laughs> science! <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> I just remembered that science, uh, scientist from The Simpsons when you did that. Was it Dr. Science. Nick? Science! <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the blister on the skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. That's a terrible impression. But I know, but I know, it. but that, it made me think of that, so, uh, yeah. No, I like that's, that. a, that's an interesting one, though, that the, yeah, man. the fact that that's a viral sort of thing, that yeah. the skin would react in a... It sounds like a viral sort of thing, yeah. rather than it being like a genetic condition, because I know yeah, that there is viral. Yeah, there is. I can't think of what the name is, but there is a genetic condition that um, people have where they are incredibly sensitive to sunlight to the point at which their mm. skin yeah. does blister up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this could, yeah, this could well be it, or you know, there could be a, a version of it. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I thought that was sort of interesting. So there is almost like a real world kind of link to where some of these beliefs come from, mm. you know, in terms of, you know, how you, you know, dispose of a vampire, I guess. So, yeah, I guess it always yeah. always comes back to something, I guess. Sunlight and fire, that'll do the trick. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and silver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, silver. Yeah, well, I, I, I do come on to why, um, why sort of garlic and silver um, and, you know, uh, crosses um, mm. and stuff are, are believed to fend off... Um, you know, vampires, uh, but that, that, yeah, I'll come on to that in a, in a little bit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so as we said, um, you know, they're also, you know, they're quite prominent in, you know, in fiction and the, in terms of the fiction side of it anyway, it, it was in 1819, um, that the vampire was, was kind of born, I guess. Um, and that was in a, a publication called The Vampire by an English author, actually. Um, Bram Stoker, was it? it no, it Bram wasn't. Stoker. No, everyone thinks that, you know, that he was kind of the godfather of, you know, the vampire and the kind of one that started it all. Um, He's but, the one that started the modern movement of the vampire. The, the modern movement, the yeah. The Lugosi sort of... I feel like the kind of what image. Romero did with zombies. Yeah. He, he kind of did it with... Um, yeah, he kind of did it with, uh, with with Dracula. But even, I think even before, I mean, I'd have to check the dates, but even before him, you know, there was, see, Mary Shelley. He uh, took an idea, he packaged it up, and he's, he's selling yeah. it. He's selling it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, it's, uh, and, yeah, and this, uh, yeah, this particular publication, I say it's called The Vampire, and uh, it's claimed to be the most um, influential work in the genre. Um, the plot seems um, pretty similar to uh, an interview with a vampire. 
Mm. Um, and you know, as you as you rightly sort of touched on, it, it's actually seventy eight years later in eighteen ninety seven that Bram Stoker's novel Dracula um, came out, and that's the one that's kind of known as the granddaddy of the of the genre. Mm. Um, but yeah, from what I could see, he's actually he's actually not. Yeah, um, but even twenty six years prior to that. Um, an Irish author um, by the name of uh, Joseph Sheridan um, uh, wrote a novel um, called uh, Carmilla, which is a, a kind of a romance, uh, sort of romance novel mm. that, in, to an extent, I guess, um, you know, like with the the glamouring and all that yeah, sort of business, gotcha. th- th- that kind of thing. So it's romanticised, I guess. Um, and yeah, so that was his uh, novel that was twenty six years prior to Bram Stoker. So. Um, now, what do they yeah. say? A the, couple of British dudes uh, started that, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what, are they, what is it they say about writing? Um, a, a, a good author um, uses some ideas from someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A great author just outright steals it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I thought it was quite interesting when I read that because, yeah, did, you know, we all think that it was Bram Stoker that kind of started mm. it. And, and you, you could argue that he did to an extent, like, like as you say, with the modern, um, you know, the modern version. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the the first instances of it in, in sort of modern literature, um, you know, sort of meant for the masses um, mm. was, um, yeah, the sort of early, early uh, 1800s, which... Uh, well, he first, yeah, from what good. I understand as well, he first got the it out as like small stories um, in the form of Penny Dreadfuls. So right, okay. the Penny Dreadful was, um, apart from being a TV series, yeah. um, it was actually a series of novellas. Yeah. Where very short they, stories. They yeah. cost a penny. Yeah. And they were horror stories. Yeah. So it was very much along these sort of lines, like the Dracula, the mm. Wolf Man. Yeah. So probably yeah. the, girl, the, the Hollywood mo- monster movies. Yeah. Before Hollywood. Yeah, pretty much. Which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. So Hollywood stole that idea and all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've got nothing original anymore, have they? So you buggers. Got still something. Yeah. Um, so I know we touched on it a little bit, but a, a, I suppose a little bit more of um, the, you know, etymology uh, as always. Mm. Um, now, the word vampire was first used in English in uh, in 1732. Um, it, f- it featured um, following an epidemic in Eastern Europe. Um the English term uh, a vampire was supposedly derived from the French vampire um, or Ger- or German, which is kind of similar. I don't know how you'd pronounce it any different, but they're, they're more or less spelt the same. Um, so it's a, yeah, sort of connotation of, of either or both of, mm, the vampire, of those. Um, vampire, vampire. Vampire. It's, it's like vampire. Vampire and vampire, mm. whether it's German or, or French. Um that's how I'm kind of reading it, but it's spelled so similar. I don't is know. It's a vampire. It. <laughs> it's vampire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sucky, sucky. <laughs> You're channeling your blue Laborg right there. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> now, interestingly, there's no, because normally what, you know, what we can do when I look into this stuff, you can normally trace it back to a particular culture or, a, you know, a particular language and, and be like, mm. right, this is what the word means. It's either, you know, this bit means that and that means that and they've put it together to create one word or there is just quite a clearly defined, um, you know, sort of definition. But there isn't really an exact etymology, um, but it is believed to come from um, a Turkic, Turkish word for witch, um, which in turn is, is believed to mean... Um, someone who bites. Oh, okay, that don't make sense. Or, or someone who thrusts. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> but you beat me to it. <laughs> oh yeah, someone who thrusts. <laughs> that's the, that's what. Yeah, that's funny the enough, kind of the actually, earliest. It's funny you say that. Actually, I'm going to go on a little diversion here. Gone. There's a really really funny term. Like when you um, have you ever seen those videos where they go about like the Victorian slang and mm. stuff like that? We need to bring these words back, sort of thing. Right. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> one of the one of the funniest terms for a homosexual, <laughs> right, was a fun fruster. <laughs> <laughs> A fun thruster. Fun thruster. I was like, oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> you, sir, are a fun thruster. <laughs> Do 
Jesus Christ. Like, uh, yeah. There's I, a little just, drop, in, yeah. drop in the useless knowledge there for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's what we do for two hours every, every couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. You can you can add that to your uh, a pub fountain quiz. Of, a fountain of useless knowledge. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Like, what you were saying with regards to there seems to be no origin for the actual etymology of the word. Not really. They've it tried seemed, to trace it back, but... Well, it seems like the, the actual... Um, legend of a vampire goes a little bit further east than Eastern Europe because yeah. I found some bits, I'm going to divert a little bit here, in mm. India. And I found right, quite okay. a few different ones that seem to be... Yeah, I didn't that, go that far afield. Well, they That's match. interesting, yeah. It matches a lot of the, the, the European stuff. So right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and pronounce some of these. Right, go on. <laughs> now, we've got the... Uh, <laughs> Rakshasas. <laughs> Oh, hang on a second, let me get that back up here. There we go. So the Rakshasas is a demonic entity and they um, is most recent, uh, the earliest, sorry, the earliest mm. um, uh, form that it was in was yeah. in the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, the, right, two, okay. the two famous epics from, from India. Right, gotcha. Um, and they're depicted as shape-shifting creatures right. from Tala. Now, apparently Tala is a subterranean world of darkness. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So the same. It has the same sort of attributes as the um, European vampire, mm. um, which nocturnal. Yeah. Has long fangs. Um, it can be destroyed with sunlight or fire. Yeah. Um, and it feeds um, on the blood of the living. Right. Now, okay. It's interesting. It prefers infants. Yeah. Or pregnant women. Yep, um, I did see that come up actually in, in the Eastern Europe ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah they seem to attack pregnant women because they made, or well, they didn't make, but what they might have made them do it actually. But yeah, pregnant women um, would um, make these kind of um, what would you call them? Like a, I can't think the bloody word now. I wish I'd written it down. Like a, a like a protector, like a what's the pink, the pinkish pinkishian thing. A vo- like voodoo doll, sorry. Oh, okay. Like a voodoo doll type thing that they would a make. Grigory sort and of thing. And they would like- sort of sleep with it as a as a kind of protector ah, for when okay. they were asleep. So that would kind of absorb effigy. any... Yeah, I guess like so. Like yeah, I guess of, effigy, of, of yeah. a protective guess, spirit yeah. sort of thing. For want of the actual word, yeah. yeah. Eff- effigy, definitely, oh, okay. yeah. Well, th- well these, um, these other, these creatures from India, um, they call cemeteries home. Right, yeah. Um, and can possess the dead and make the corpse rise. Right. So yep. okay. it seems like these things are actually an ethereal sort of creature, yeah. but then can possess a human body. body. Um, <coughs> again, going down the same sort of route that we was looking at with regards to the historical vampire and being a bit more ghoulish, yeah. there is a uh, Pisacious. Right. Uh, again, I'm probably butchering no that. No doubt. <laughs> um, it's a ghoul-like, and it translates to eaters of raw flesh. Nice, okay. Um, so a legend brought into the world through the anger of the deity Brahma. Um, and even though, like, the Rakshasas have, like, some sort of resemblance of, like, intelligence okay. sort of thing, yeah. these uh, Pisashas mm. are more animalistic. They're, they, they're very much inhuman in, in appearance. They've got bulging right. eyes, or yeah. go- googly eyes. Googly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Little popping veins, and they've got rows of, like, jagged teeth. Right. Um, nice. That again, these can, these can possess the living, yeah, um, and make them do vile things and mm. drive them insane. Okay, um, so it's more, yes, yeah, so it's more of a, a, like a spirit or entity, yeah. Which there are parts of the world that actually believe that that's what a vampire is, as, as opposed to a humanoid physical form that we kind of know. Yeah, there are cultures that believe that, yeah, they are actually more demonic. Exactly, yeah, entities, yeah, and and, that, and again, they can be destroyed by sunlight or fire. Yeah. And to expand upon you know, that, like that, and rice goes down that route with mm. her origin of her vampires yeah. as well. Um, if you've ever read Queen of the Damned, mm. um, not necessarily watching the film, the film's still great, yeah. great soundtrack and all <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah. But the, the book itself, it goes in, it's, it's such a, it's such a better story. Yeah. It really well, is. normally and are, aren't they? And it goes into all of the, how the vampires came about and that it's actually this demonic spirit that has a thirst for blood. Yeah. And it just keeps, it's like a hive mind sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's just a very similar sort of thing to that. Um, I came across another sort of vampire-like creature. Okay. Um, and it's called a Vital. Uh, okay. A Vetal. A Vetal, sorry. Um, and it's a bat-like humanoid. Right, okay. So um, features very heavily in the Indian epic Vetala uh, Pachisi. 
and it is extremely malicious and sadistic. It can possess both the living and the dead. It nice. feeds on children. Um, it can change body like uh, it changes clothes. So um, almost sort of like a like a Renfield sort of thing. Like it can possess someone to be its mm. servant, its, yeah, yeah. its slave. Mm. Um, and has the power to drive victims insane at a glance. Nice. Again, the idea of the glamour and everything yeah, yeah. else that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, can cause miscarriages. Um, enjoys yeah. havoc and misery wherever it goes. Um, yeah. Now these these creatures, the Vital or Vetal, um, they come about through improper burial rites. Um, oh. So if, if if the if the deceased aren't buried correctly, then they can rise from the grave and become one of these bat like humanoids. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, the only way to get rid of them is an exorcism or a ritual. To right. cast the demon out. Um, okay. So that's yep. the only so, one that, that I found that wasn't <coughs> like uh, the the sunlight and, and the fire. Um, yeah. The, the, More the, spiritually based yeah. in terms of how you get rid of it, yeah. But again, going on the vampire witch thing. Mm, yeah. So the the idea of the Turkish yeah. uh, name coming from it, it was, a, a, I guess, a churel, a churel um, which means vampire witch. Oh, cool. Now, in other regions, it has various different names, um, like Jakin, Jakai, uh, Mukai, and Nagulakai. You've made uh, that one up, haven't you? <laughs> Nagulai. <laughs> right, okay. <yeah. laughs> you saw the look on my face of that. I think I got that right. I really didn't. <laughs> so it's a risen corpse of a female who was mistreated or tortured by her family, um, wow. or she died in childbirth. Um, right. Now, the purpose of this vampire witch is that she comes back to kill the men, specifically, um, and drink their blood. Right. I would assume that's because the men were mistreating yeah. the women. The women, yeah. And their family. Yeah. Um, so what she would do, <clears throat> she would seduce or mm. lure men away, um, and these men would return all shriveled up, old, and yeah. drained of, of life. Yeah. So – and. Typically, Just like being married. <laughs> well, speak for yourself, mate. I ain't, there's no ring on this finger, not yet. <laughs> well, pretty much there, and all. Yeah, so, pretty much there. Um, typically, they are young and beautiful as well. Yeah. So I don't know if that's. But they change after the death, or mm. if it is just young, beautiful women who have been mistreated. Yeah. Um, and now to stop sure this is where the um links with the european stuff comes in quite strongly so with the churl the the idea was to drive iron nails through the hands and feet wrap iron chains around their legs right um this one's a little bit different putting red chilies in the eyes okay yeah Interesting. Um, but also to keep a churl out of the home uh, you, they would spread uh, millet seeds across doorways and openings because, like the European yeah. legends, yeah. it was thought that she would be compelled to count every single one of them until the morning sun rose and drove her away. And then drove her away, yeah. That's- I think that also plays in part to what they also believe with, with this and also in other kind of spirits is if you put salt across your front door, yeah, they can't cross over. Well, the, they can't cross over that because yeah. that's come up as well. I think as a way of warding them off, mm. but the more demonic, uh, obviously, version. Yeah, I mean that that in itself. If if you have looked into anything like that, or you know any sort of idea of rituals or, or whatever, that in itself would be completely redundant mm. because these things aren't stopped by walls. Mm. So if you were to put down a line of salt, you better make sure it's a complete circle around wherever it is that you are. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's one of those yeah. things that people they see it on like the tv series or yeah. like supernatural like it's a salt line it's like, okay they can't cross it but they're, they're not walk, stopped by walls or windows yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they just come around the other side yeah, yeah just, <laughs> they're gonna walk around it <coughs> fucking yeah. i've seen i've seen snails and slugs go up a wall right get, get past salt <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know? exactly <laughs> oh. well I, I like that though man yeah, yeah, especially that's... a different part of the, the world because yeah my my research didn't didn't take me that that far. Well, most people was... think it's a European sort of sort of phenomena. Oh well, yeah, there's even exactly yeah. It even I didn't make any notes of it, but um, I did find um, fewer legends of vampire-like creatures mm. from China, from 
yeah. further east mm. than that. So, okay. um, again, it's one of these things that seems to be a bit more worldwide. Starts off, yeah, sort of somewhere, and then it picks up pace and inbreds itself in, mm. you know, a lot of different sort of cultures. and Either, either these things do exist mm. or these cultures were once connected. Yeah. Don't and the stories have which, just gone with them, yeah. I don't know which one I believe more. No. Mm. No, I don't at this point. Yeah. It could be a, a nice blend of the two, I suspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I suppose just going back to um, some descriptions, again, we, we kind of know from, you know, things like Blade and, you know, True Blood, Twilight, you know, oh, all you know, all Don't get me started. Yeah, and, the, and of course, the underworld um, movies that yep. there are very, uh, you know, and, and each one is different in in its depiction and in and how they sort of describe mm. um, vampires, and and that's why it was actually hard to pin down one sort of definitive look as the, the you know, the kind of the the origin or the the sort of the intended um, look and description mm. uh, of a vampire. Like I said, there was the early. The early one from the, the, the 1700s, um, you know, that I mentioned before, um, you know, where they'd sort of shroud their face and they'd be quite, um, yeah, sort of dark expression, you know, sort of bloated sort of stature. Um, but that doesn't really kind of stick with any other sort of culture or, or region when you look into like their version of, like each one is... I mean like historically? Kind of, yeah, historically, yeah. Gotcha. So I, that's why I, mean, I couldn't pin down... Um, yeah, one one definitive look, um, and yeah, as I say, especially because there have been so many, you know, versions over the years. Um, you know, saying that, um, most um, early European descriptions do have a lot of similar characteristics, but again, not all the same. Um, <clears throat> and again, go back to like the bloated appearance with reddish or purple skin, so not pale mm. and not skinny because they're you know they're bloated, um, long fangs and a shroud to cover their face. Um, and they all have a thirst to drink blood that they, they were kind of the main characteristics that I could find that were similarities between a lot of the Eastern European. Cause if you go from like Romania, you know, to Russia, um, you know, to Albania, you know, although they're, you know, relatively close in the scheme of things, their versions are all, yeah, yeah. Their, their, um, their versions are all somewhat different. Mm. Um, so again, much like the you know the sort of the etymology, really the you know the descriptions as well aren't you know there's one there there isn't one format. Yeah, I understand. That's what you see mean. what I mean? It's not like a. It's not like Bigfoot where you can go to a big hairy <laughs> geezer that yeah makes weird noises in the woods. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. that's like a very definitive. Yeah, uh, it kind of it is what it is. Of yeah. What that is. Mm. Whereas with the vampire, like like what I was saying at the beginning, yeah, it's a much more um, it's become much more subjective phenomenon. Than, yeah, than there being an objective. Um, a creature or, yeah. or or entity or something like that. It's, yeah, that's right. I like, think they will they'll kind of look how you need them to look mm. based on your intention. So if you're writing it, you know, so if, like in, in you know in Christianity, for example, if you know if you're writing it, you know, to scare people or to have a you know an intended purpose, then it's going to look ghoulish. It's going to look like a monster and you know and quite you know mm. sort of horrifying. But then you know if it's you know if, if you if you then go back to like Eastern Europe or even parts of Western Europe, then it's going to be depicted as a, you know, a, a vengeful, beautiful woman mm. or, you know, a witch or, you know, so yeah. it's, yeah, as you say, there, there isn't just, you know, you can't put your finger on one description and say, right, that's what they actually look like or that's what they should look like mm. because it's just completely blown open. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, there, in that respect. There's a really interesting psych <clears throat> psychology, uh, psychological um, explanation or theory for that in that mm. the the idea of the vampire is um, it's like an in, um, an internal manifestation of our yeah. desires. Which yeah, makes perfect sense, really. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it would it will look like how you want it to look or how you intend it to look for whatever purpose that might be, and that seems to be what people. Yeah, I mean, will kind of the idea of the vampire is very sexy, mm. you know, and and there's also the the brutality of the vampire. Like we all have these um, these fantasies of murdering someone brutally. Yeah, usually your boss. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, usually your boss. Yeah. But you do you have these 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 weird little fantasies and, and that. And they, they do have these more 
um, brutal sort of mm. um, themes and such. And and the idea of the vampire is that you can, because they look so human, especially yeah. in the modern day yeah, depictions, absolutely, yeah. you can see yourself being in that position and you can... Yeah. You can, re- you can relate to it, you know. Exactly. And I think the, the attraction or part of the attraction as well is that you've got something, you know, that can be depicted as so, you know, beautiful mm. that, you know, that can do such harm or well, cause such, it's you know, also sort the, of horror. The know, idea that the, the vampire doesn't show in, in a mirror. Um, and from yeah. a psychological point of view, the reason why that is is because they're already a reflection of yourself. Yeah. So you, mm. it, it, if they were to look into a mirror, all they would see would be you yeah their creator sort mm. of thing so uh, it's very poetic mm. oh yeah definitely and i yeah. never thought psychology would be quite poetic yeah but- <laughs> so, i mean it's, it's been romanticized isn't it and yeah. that's the yeah and i think that's the kind of the issue especially with kind of trying to tie down any <clears throat> you know originality um you know in that, in that respect but um yeah no it's um it's interesting uh obviously you know i didn't want to go into each you know kind of you know description because you know you could look at you know, Blade Two, for mm. example, you know, and, and how they're depicted, which are similar to the Strigoi in the Strain, where they're not just yeah. you know a mouth with fangs; they actually you know dislocate their jaws and the mandible you know, opens up and all of this. Yeah, sort of exactly. Stuff. Well, like snakes. Yeah. Sort of well, thing, the like, reason for that respect. is uh, Guillermo del Toro. He was the producer on the Strain and yeah. he directed and Blade he, Two, yeah, which I didn't know until we were looking into it. Yeah. So that, that did make sense. But it's then probably you've my got, favorite Blade film, actually. Yeah, because he he goes back into the horror. Yeah, yeah. And that, I must say, my favourite sort of vampires are the horror vampires. Yeah. You know, what, 30 Days of Night. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant film. That like, is really good. Incredible. Yeah. So, so dark. And it, mm. it's exactly what you would yeah. expect the the entity of a vampire being. Yeah. I mean, I like the Anne Rice stuff. It's great. Yeah, it is great. Brilliant yeah. films, brilliant books. But... The horror, yeah, of thirty yeah. days of night, mate. Definitely, yeah. Being, being a, a sort of a, a horror fan, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I would sort of, you know, tend to agree that, you know, that, as you said, the other stuff is is great and you know it's fine, but yeah, I think when it gets down to the horror of it, mm. and yeah, the, especially with now we, we've you know going through this, you know, you look at the the fact that they are, you know believed to be demonic and, you know, monstrous only with like ill intention, you know, mm. to then look at them in any other light doesn't quite you know, um, what seem you, to do it. What you mean, me. when yeah. they step into the light, they start glittering. <laughs> well, they start sparkling, they yeah. Start sparkly, yeah. sparkly vampires. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, drop me out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. But, yeah, no, not for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, um, yeah, I suppose going off that, you know, we all, you know, think that we know how, you know, you are turned into, you know, a vampire. And for the most part, a lot of the pop culture seems to stick with the one, um, you know, the one uh, theme, but there are some early Mm. beliefs from Slavic and Chinese folklore, um, which kind of add a different idea to to how you're turned. Um, In Chinese tradition, any corpse that was jumped over by an animal, in particular a cat or a dog, was feared to then become one of the undead. And I think I could see that happening a lot, though. Well, well, I think it's also because, you know, those animals in particular... um, you know, a sort of assigned to the underworld. Mm. And, that, and so I, I guess if an animal comes close and then sort of jumps over it, some kind of like acceptance into the underworld and then you would, you know, sort of rise again as is the beautiful undead. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's, yeah, so I, I guess that's where that, um, you know, has, uh, has come from. Um, in, Seems like a very low criteria. Oh, it doesn't take much, yeah. <laughs> it, does, yeah it doesn't take much, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of how you'd, um, uh, you know, how you would... Uh, you know, identify a witch. Doesn't it yeah. didn't take much, does, did does, it? Does she weigh as much as a duck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did she drown? Oh, she was a witch. Yeah, yeah. No, but well, she no. survived. Oh, she must have been a witch then. How yeah. would you survive that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, if she drowned, then she's with the god, and she was innocent. Um, but if she, if she floats, then we're gonna burn her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the criteria never seem to be particularly high yeah. when she uh, turned me into a newt. <laughs> I got better. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah th- I think like with, with many things, when it's drawn into kind of real world, <coughs> excuse me, uh, beliefs, um, yeah, there, there wasn't much in the way of, uh, yeah, its criteria in, in terms of how you would, mm. yeah, be identified as uh, as that. But um, yeah, I suppose, yeah, feeding off the, the witch thing in, in Russia, vampires were believed to be witches or uh, people who had... Um, 
rebelled against the Russian Orthodox Church. Ah. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> those Christians again. Yep, those Christians again. <laughs> <laughs> I said they always pop up, don't they? <laughs> Pesky Christians. <laughs> I think they're a bloody cryptid, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, they keep cropping up. Yeah. Oh, JC, maybe. <laughs> JC, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but, 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 yeah, so th- th- there, yeah, there are some um, cultural practices that, again, um, that, you know, that you've sort of touched on with like putting chilies under the eyes and, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but a couple of others that I came across um, was that someone suspected of being a, um, a vampire would actually be buried upside down. Um, mm. And that was introduced to apparently stop them turning into a vampires. I guess if they were facing the right way, they could dig their way out and come back That's into this world. Whereas one. if they're well, facing down, then they can only dig. Well, they just dig a hole further towards hell. I guess I don't like know. vertically. So they put them in vertically upside down. That's like, I've read that to be upside down, like head first. Oh like, yeah. Okay. So still like, sitting horizontal, but rather than facing up, they're facing down. I mean, yeah. I mean, that could. Yeah, that could be. I mean, I've. Literally like that. There's like too many possibilities. Vertically upside down. But yeah, there's two. Can you imagine that? <laughs> right, the priest says you've got to bury them upside down. Let's be a bit more specific. <laughs> yeah. How do you mean? How do you mean upside down? Face planting or do you face, mean actually? Face planting, yeah. <laughs> face planting or do you want me like to just vertically dig Vertically like head first. Yeah, like a, just bore out a massive hole and we drop them in drop head them in first. It. Yeah. Like, yeah. How are we doing that? That's that's how I've interpreted it. But yeah, it could it could be either of those to be fair. Sod digging that hole. Because neither of them makes sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, but the, um, the, the Greeks would bury their dead uh, with a coin in the corpse's mouth. Um, mm. This would, this would be to, to pay their toll to the underworld mm. to ensure that they wouldn't come back. So the idea of putting the pennies across the eyes as mm. well for, for the ferryman. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, however, it's argued that it wasn't to pay their toll to the underworld, but it was actually to fend off um, evil spirits. Um, and they believed that that was one of the gateways to, you know, to the soul. Same with the eyes. Mm. Eyes are the gateway to the soul. That's why the coins would go over the eyes. Yeah. Greeks believed it was orally. Oh. <laughs> well, we've heard about the, the the old Spartans and all that. Well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, love, love thy brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Um, so, yeah, so this... Um, it, 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 more or less is where the belief of um, using silver against uh, vampires um, oh, so sort of like came a silver from. Silver coin, put in. Okay, yeah. So yeah. the silver coin, in either the eyes or or the mouth, um, to sort of prevent them from you know coming back as you know sort of the undead. That's why then it's gradually kind of morphed into like silver bullets and you know silver crosses and Gosh, li- liquid silver, silver, silver and, and, all that sort of yeah, stuff. and all that gubbins. Yeah, but that that is more or less where the kind of the belief. Is, mm. is that that's that's where it came from? Well, that's also one it's of those the early other, practices which people actually do. So yeah, it's one of the other links that that it has with werewolves again. Yeah, which is exactly you know, yeah. what with silver being fatal to a werewolf as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now I've um, I also came across a, a story um, which uh, is believed to actually be the first um, vampire. Oh, like the OG. I've since okay. found an, I've since found another story. <laughs> I've got one which, as well, uh, which uh, people believe, um, yeah, is, is 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 the first. But this was this was the first one I found, which um, which I quite like because it kind of ties into a lot of the sort of uh, like Greek um, mythology with oh, the various um, okay. sort of gods and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, but this uh, story uh, is about Ambrosio, um, who, as I say, is believed to actually be the first vampire. Um, he was just a simple um, Italian man uh, and a keen adventurer. He'd always wanted uh, to visit Delphi in Greece and more specifically the Oracle of Delphi um, mm. He because he wanted his um, his uh, fortune to be read. Delphi. Um, <clears throat> Delphi, is it? Delphi. Cool. Okay, yeah. thanks. Um, the... Uh, the Oracle. So he made his trip. He he, he got to uh, to Delphi, and upon seeing him, the Oracle muttered only a few phrases: the curse, the moon, and the blood will run. Now they're three separate fra- uh, statements that she made. Oh, okay. So the curse, gotcha. the curse was the first thing she said. Then she said the moon, 
Oh, okay. And then the third one separately was, I hope she the, elaborated was that the blood will run. Apparently not. <laughs> oh, she just said those. No, things. she literally just said those, like, sort of read his palm and was just like, bop, bop, bop. Or, I don't know if it was palm reading, but yeah, sort of told his fortune, yeah. you know, <clears throat> however however she did it, I suppose. Um, now, disturbed by the oracle's message, um, Ambrosio slept outside the temple as he tried to understand the meaning of what she said. He was basically waiting for her because the following morning um, he planned to wait, see... Waiting for her to come out of the sort, office. Sort her out, yeah. Yeah, so the following morning he planned to see the oracle again, but mm. instead he spotted a beautiful maiden entering the temple. Um, it was um, the oracle's... Uh, one of the... Uh, sorry, it was the... What, put my teeth in. Get your teeth. Get your words out, man. It was one of the oracle's handmaidens, and her name was Serene, um, mm. who was also a titan goddess. Um, and she would attend the temple every day to care for the oracle. Um, so Ambrosio would return every day just to see the maiden um, and would eventually fall in love with her. Um, he just straight up asked her to, you know, marry him. And uh, they returned to his hometown. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now, watching from afar, the god Apollo was in enraged that a mortal would take his beautiful maiden and in his fury, he cursed Ambrosio so that the touch of the sun would burn his flesh, meaning he also couldn't um, see Selene the following morning um, as he'd have to return to Italy in the cover of night. So he couldn't wait well. till the morning, you know. Makes sense with Apollo being the sun god as well. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, Ambrosio fled to the caves and sought protection from Hades, which is... Always going to go well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, Ambrosio and Hades um, um, basically struck a, a, a deal um, where Ambrosio would leave his soul with Hades as down payment for a magical bow. <laughs> I've got James Wood's voice in my head at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Right, come on, let's, let's strike a deal. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ambrosio, exactly, yeah. I'll give you a bow. I'll give you a bow. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, Just sign here. So, yeah, sign right there. <laughs> um, he would then use um, said bow um, to kill um, Artemis, the sister of mm. Apollo, and steal her bow um, and give that back to Hades as kind of full payment. Yeah. As he, as he believed. I, I am paraphrasing. There is a, obviously a hell of a lot of story <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. I had to read through. But In I've the just, interest of time. I've just kind of taken the, yeah, just the sort of the, the, cliff, the cliff notes. Yeah. Cliff notes, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the bow that Hades gave to Ambrosio was wooden, um, but the one that he got from Artemis was silver. So again, it's where the whole ah. silver thing comes from. Um, basically, so the idea was that, yeah, he was supposed to go, um, yeah, and kill Artemis for this silver bow. But Ambrosio basically fucked up using, he basically wasted all his arrows <laughs> by killing swans <laughs> and uh, using their blood to write poetry to Selene. So he didn't, didn't even go try and kill Artemis as intended. He, he just was like... <laughs> He procrastinated then, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, basically, yeah. Took the blood from all these swans to basically write in blood poetry for, um, yeah, for Selene. Um, <clears throat> however, he, so he didn't kill Artemis, but he was able to steal the bow from her, um, okay. which was, again, he, he sort of <laughs> left her alive. So when she realised what, you know, had happened, um, she too put a curse on um, Ambrosio that meant the touching of silver would burn his skin and cause him great pain. So again, we've now gotcha. got sun, sunlight, sunlight, and we've now silver. got silver. Um, now, being the bearer of two curses, he dropped to his knees and begged for mercy. Taking pity on him, taking pity on him Artemis gave him one last chance. Um, she then made him as powerful as a hunter as she was, with the speed and strength of a god, and also the fangs for him to draw blood from his prey, so he could so he could continue writing his poetry. Oh, so that's where the fangs come from. Yeah. So the idea of the romantic <clears throat> vampire mm. is a lot earlier than Bram Stoker. Yeah, yeah. It's Greek, okay, I didn't yeah. know about this Greek uh, Greek mythology. Yeah. So in exchange for his immortality, he was 
to deny all other gods but her and was supposed to abandon his love of Celine. Um, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't Celine the name of... Underworld. Yeah, okay. I did think that when I was reading it. So I was yeah. like, oh, think maybe this is where it's come from. Um, Celine, <clears throat> oddly enough... It's what's her name? Kate it, Beckinsale, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. But the, the name that. Celine, I think, derives from the, from the word solar as well. Oh, does it? So he has to give up his love of the sun. Oh, okay. There you go. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. So it's all coming together. It does, <laughs> yeah. it? Um, instead, he... So he, instead of <clears throat> yeah, listening again, <laughs> uh, he told Celine to meet him on his ship um, and he told the crew um, to set sail as soon as she stepped foot on board. Mm. He instructed her to open um, his coffin at sunset. <clears throat> Um, they sailed to Ephesus and Lee lived together for many years in a cave. Um, the years weren't kind to uh, Celine and she became very ill. Um, Ambrosio was granted the chance to touch her by Artemis and basically turned her so that they could be together forever. Um, however, her mortal body died and her soul raised to the skies to meet Artemis and that's and she then became a goddess of the moon. Oh, I got that wrong then. I Which is why they is not the god. Yeah, okay, it's yeah. the moon rather than it being. So that, but that's, uh, but that's why that's, they. I guess it's believed that they come out at night under the protection of Celine. Celine, the, you know, that the, makes the more god. sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, no, but I, I like wrong, that though because it tied it though. in nicely though with yeah. like with what you said. Yeah, um, that's just me creative. So I did, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, just I'm, making shit up. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm on board with that, man. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's the yeah that's the the story of Ambrosio and the you know, basically the the first vampire. Because if you look, at, you know, he had the strength of a god. Mm. He had the speed. You know, two attributes that you know are quite well known with you know sort of vampires, even the modern. Um, mm. modern uh, iterations um, you know he was given the fangs so he could draw blood from his prey so you know that's very, you know what that's very very close to <coughs> the modern idea yeah. of a vampire isn't it yeah absolutely and then um, obviously he had the immortality which again is a you know um, tragic a, a sort of a, a tragic uh, yeah curse yeah. Um, but then he also had the the specific curses which were the you know the touch of silver and, and the sun you know, mm. to his skin. So, yeah, I can I can see why people would, um, you know, would would certainly uh, would certainly think that. It certainly it, it definitely sounds like um, Anne Rice took a lot of if if she you know knew I'm guessing she would, would have suspect known about so. this particular yeah. mythos in particular yeah. um, that she's her her inspiration has come from this yeah. because her vampires are incredibly tragic. Like they yeah. you you end up. With, with the way that the story is written, you end up em, um, emphasising with them. That you have a lot of empathy for mm. them. You end up pitying them. That whereas that that horror element mm. of them being this ravenous uh, denizen of darkness, yeah, exactly, yeah. is is gone, and they're just suddenly misunderstood. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. They're, they're, yeah. they're these tragic creatures that can never touch love mm. and, and stuff. It's, yeah, it, yeah, it's very. Um, that's Greek a, tragedy, a very Greek. Tragedy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I'll be honest. I wasn't. Um, yeah, I wasn't um, aware of it initially. Um, but yeah, when I yeah came across it, I thought it was really because I love the Greek mythology and all that, like, the gods and mm. all that kind of thing. Anyway, and then when that tied in, you know, sort of to this as being the first, um, you know, sort of vampire. Um, yeah, I, I thought. Yeah, I want to want to mention that one. Yeah, that's cool. I I like you'd, that. you'd like it. Mm. Um, now, I suppose one thing that I wanted to touch on, um, and I know you mentioned this um, as well, um, was the kind of the believed inspiration for the character Dracula. Mm. Um, basically, a, uh, a, a Romanian uh, chap by the name of Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, Vlad Depesh. Um is actually uh, Vlad the uh, Third, also known as Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Dracula. Um, he was a military leader of Valachia in uh, in Romania, um, and he was the son of Vlad Dracul, mm. uh, who was the ruler of um, uh, Valachia or Valachia. Um, <clears throat> he was known as uh, Dracul. Mean it's a yeah. title. It's, it yeah. means the dragon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
Fucking spoiler alert! I'm coming sorry, on to that. Sorry, man. Oh, oh I, don't, I don't need to I'll bother you, now. You've I'll t- let you've you do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's why I'm sorry. kidding. I know about this kidding. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, yeah. No, I, again, I know it's, it's one of those things that everyone sort of thinks they know. Oh, yeah, Vlad the Impaler inspired the story. Blah blah blah. But you know, I mean, I'll go through the, the sort of the details that kind of led people to that belief. Mm. Um, but also, much like Bram Stoker, that he may actually not have been. Yeah. the uh the inspiration but um but yeah we're, we're both getting ahead of ourselves so i'll, I'll <laughs> yeah all right i'll, I'll let you do I'll your go thing. back to the start <laughs> <laughs> um but, uh, but yeah so so the name um dracula has only recently become linked to um vampires um but as you rightly say was actually a nickname given to vlad's dad vlad the second it, it was given to him when he became a member of the Order of the Dragon. Um, and uh, again, yeah, as you rightly say, Dracul in uh, in Slavic uh, means dragon. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's where that's where that came from. Um, the use of stakes um, in vampire folklore is due to Vlad's um, choice of execution, um, which was impalement. Yeah. Now, obviously, the stakes you see in the film are like handheld, like sort of little wooden stakes. But you know, the OG ones yeah, were probably buffy like, stakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, <coughs> but these, yeah, the, these things the, the like ones it. in the um, like that he used were like six to twelve foot long mm. bits of like wood that were obviously like um, angled into the ground. Yeah. And then people were were pushed onto them, he, you know, uh, impaled. The the way, um, the other way that they would that he would do it was he would have them sitting vertically these these stakes, yeah. these uh, these posts, and he would put them on top. He'd sit them on top, <laughs> yeah, so that they would slowly <laughs> descend and they, they, uh, through the stake, and the stake would go f- up through, there. through through the pelvis, yeah. um, <laughs> and go through the body and come up between. The shoulder. The shoulder and the, and the shoulder, yeah. yeah. And basically it was yeah. a slow, painful death. death. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Imagine that. Yeah. I mean, very, very similar to how the, the Japanese in World War Two used to do the bamboo torture. torture. the POWs, yeah, yeah. You know, they let, let, let the bamboo grow through yeah. the cages and through people. Yeah, yeah. It's like, fuck. Brutal, man. Yeah, no wonder he was known for being a bit of a... Nasty bastard. Um, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least, yeah. yeah. Putting it politely. <laughs> nasty bastard. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Vlad, you nasty bastard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, again, there isn't too much known about his kind of place of birth and, and time of birth and that kind of thing, but from kind of early texts and, mm. um, uh, yeah, and, and, and sort of literature, he's believed that he was born between 1428 and 1431. Um and at this point, his dad had settled in Transylvania as part of the military role that he had, and, and obviously ruler. Mm. Um, and so that's how it's believed that Transylvania is tied into the origin of Dracula, mm. you know, living in the creepy Transylvanian castle or whatever. It's actually because Vlad's dad was stationed there, yeah. and that's where he was born. Um, when, then eventually whenever that became, was. <clears throat> he eventually became the ruler. and He did eventually, yeah. I mean, that was a whole... That was a long old story yeah. <laughs> to read for a lot of back and forth between like him, his dad, his brother, and and some other guy who had like a claim to the throne. He, and basically, he put it in a nutshell. A lot of back he, and forth. He he won the throne essentially. Yeah, because of his prowess in. He wasn't with, entitled. With military he wasn't background. entitled to it initially in terms of being like the first mm. in line. But yeah, as you say, he he won it over a series of like. Well, he scared treachery. The, you know, revenge. He war. scared the shit out of the Ottoman Turks. Mm, with with yeah. this, because he yeah. would any invading force or um, what they call it, emissaries mm. and stuff that they would yeah. come to, to Transylvania, he would stake them and put them up on his yeah. borders, and that's yeah. with because he was uh, the ruler of a very small land. But, he had to do <clears throat> everything he could, yeah, to make it look like oh, we don't want to fuck with him. I think he tried to grow the empire, so he he had. Um, neighboring states or, or nations kind of on side, and the ones that that basically didn't if they were mm. loyal to you know like sort of his predecessor the or something yeah, like that he he would yeah he would then do he would go to war with them or he would invite them to you know lush sort of banquets 
mm. and then off them when they turned up <laughs> and, you know, and that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Abusing hospitality rights. So. Absolutely, yeah. Um, now, stories of um, Vlad found their way into German literature in um, the 1480s, um, but they weren't actually written um, officially until the 60s of, of the same period. Um, the the raids of Transylvania were, were noted um, basically using eyewitness accounts, um, although the violence um, was probably overhyped and exaggerated to help sell the books. But they actually right. spoke to, you know, kind of locals of that time to actually get an idea of what actually, you know, that like kind of happened. So like the whole staking and um, how kind of brutal he was mm. might actually have been a slight exaggeration to sell books. <laughs> really? In the 1400s, yeah. It doesn't make, well, it makes yeah. sense, that, yeah. doesn't it? Um, and it is actually one of the first examples of a best-selling best selling book <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> 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 They've converted, like, how many, like, were sold and, and how far it outreached and all this yeah. kind of thing. And, yeah, in, in Europe, it's one of the first best-selling <laughs> uh, novels from Germany, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, interestingly, the, the image used on the front of the book uh, depicted um, Vlad sitting at a table, like just eating, um, surrounded by um, corpses, mm. most of which were all impaled, yeah. uh, as you would expect. I know this image, yeah. Yeah. Um, part of the reason for using fire against vampires is also based on tales that Vlad would burn people deemed to be lazy and poor, um, yeah, yeah, Fuck. So, yeah. If he was like, oh, you, you know, you, you, you're lazy. You don't bring anything to Fucking me or my kingdom. If you're you'd poor, if you're yeah. poor, you're halfway there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're yeah. So you've, yeah, you've had it. Yeah, um, and that comes up in one of my accounts actually. Oh, uh, right. Being okay. Poor. Cool. Yeah. Um, Makes you, you're halfway there. Yeah, exactly. Um, now there was one story where um, <laughs> he executed a woman. Um, for making a shirt too short for her husband. Wow. So she just made him a shirt and it just happened to be too short, maybe like in the body or the sleeves or whatever. And so he executed her for it. Sounds a bit North Korean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, Jesus. Um, but um, yeah, just sort of harking back. Imagine that though. <coughs> what? How did he find out about that? Did the husband go? Must like, have gone to him. Like, like, look, look what she's done. Look what she's done here, mate. Look, 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 so right plonker. Look help at us this. out. <laughs> yeah. Do me a favour. Do me a favour. We can't divorce her. <laughs> yeah. Do us a favour, though, yeah? You know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll turn away. I won't say anything. Yeah. yeah. But no, yeah. So, yeah, apparently there's, there's one account. with me? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't think it was, it was Borat, was it? I don't know. <laughs> You'll leave with me. My yes, wife, you she dead. <laughs> I like wah wah wee wah <laughs> yeah she mish um, now, <laughs> now there was there was one um, historian by the name of Elizabeth Miller um, who doesn't actually think that Bram Stoker he she doesn't think that he would have known enough about Vlad the Impaler to use him as direct inspiration for Count Dracula mm. Obviously, like she agrees, there are obviously a lot of similarities, and you know there are a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, yeah similarities between you know between the two between Vlad and then in the you know in his character of, of Dracula. Um, mm. But she thinks it's it's more that he's taken it from other examples of literature who may have had a better idea of mm. of um, Vlad. Well, and it was turned also it into their own historically. <clears throat> it was said that that Vlad would would drink the blood of his victims. Um, that once he yeah. impaled them, he'd collect their blood and drink their blood. Yeah. Um, however, again, very much like the the, the German book about mm. him, it might have been that that was sensationalised and that he didn't drink the blood, but he would dip his bread in their blood. Yeah. And like, obviously he would allow some of them to survive in order to spread the story to the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Um, to, you know, because the Ottomans like knocking on your door yeah. all the bloody time. You had to do something to... Try and fend them off, really, yeah. and, and yeah. being a, being a very very small off from, yeah. nation state. Well, that was it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, I think it was based on, <coughs> excuse me, the the timings, because mm. um, he, um, I can't remember the the year that he wrote it. Now, and I did write it down. That's annoying. Um, yeah, yeah, it was the late eighteen hundreds. Anyway, I can't think the exact year, but it was yeah, the late eighteen hundreds that. 
I think that Bram Stoker wrote, um, that wrote his uh, story. Um, and yeah, she, I, I, she, yeah, she just didn't feel that there would there would have been enough concrete, you know, information at that time for him to use Vlad as a direct inspiration. She thinks that he read other literature uh, and and sort of other examples, and yeah. it's just coincidence that it's. Um, you well, know, he might that, have known what Dracul meant, you yeah. know, sort of anyway, and then just used that as, you know, but he didn't necessarily know that that's what Vlad's nickname was or his, his dad's nickname was. Mm. You know, it, it was, yeah, she, she she just thinks it was all okay, yeah, sort no, of I, consequence. I see, I see or, the point. I see the point that she's making, but um, he's got Transylvania right. He's got Dracula right. Got Dracula, yeah. Um, the characteristics. He's got the, the blood yeah. drinking yeah. right. I mean, it's certainly. Um, allowed for the inspiration of the character of, of yeah. Count Dracula. Absolutely, but, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, to be able, to, I mean, they are very, very different. Like the character of Dr- Count Dracula and Vlad the Impaler are two very, very different, very yeah. different entities in themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, however, I can understand where where the stories come from. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I she mean, makes a point, but yeah, I think it, it's a fair point. But I think there are, uh, you know. A f- kind of few too many similarities for him to have not known at least something about Vlad and his backstory mm. and you know these nicknames and you know the, the his ways of torture and, and how he's used it into you know kind of his literature but yeah she, you know she makes a point as well but um yeah so th- so there is the possibility that um that yeah he wasn't a direct influence to Bram Stoker mm. his Dracula but he may have read other pieces of, of kind of literature or read articles that were inspired directly by gotcha. sort of yeah, so it's like sense. an indirect type mm. thing but so either, either way there's enough different sources there. to create one new thing yeah exactly yeah which is not the, f- the first to do by any stretch so um, it won't be the last no absolutely not no um, so yeah yeah so I mean the, the next um, so we've, d- we've done a bit of you know myth done a bit of real world next one I've got um, actually comes uh Straight out of the Bible. Ah, but um, your bibliotheca. Absolutely, <laughs> bibliotheca. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but did you? Because you mentioned an account that was kind of linked to a couple of things that I mentioned. Did you want to go over that, or are yeah, you happy for me to do well, this first? You know, if we're talking about the literature as as well, you know, yeah. um, with, with regards to where the idea of Count Dracula come from, um, I kind of want to get into the idea of where Anne Rice's vampires came from. Right. Um, <clears throat> so anyone that has watched the films or read the books or anything like that, you know that there's a, a very, very strong link to New Orleans. Yeah. And New Orleans has got this huge subculture of vampires, werewolves, tarot, the, the witchcraft yeah. and voodoo. It's, it seems like an, a fantastic and fascinating place to go to. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Visit. Yeah. I mean, I want to go to New Orleans just to, to, yeah. just to – Go down Bourbon yeah. Street and just see, see a witch doctor uh, <laughs> Bourbon, Bourbon, Bourbon Street. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking biscuit. That's street. Englishman in your name. <laughs> biscuit Street. Yeah, <laughs> Biscuit Street. Sorry, sorry <laughs> to those Americans out there. But um, yeah, so I found a story that that comes from uh, 1903. Nice from New Orleans, and um, it starts with um, the, the the body of a of a local prostitute was found lying in the street. And she was all beaten and bloodied and... Uh, Start of any great story. I know, always. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good murder mystery. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and her leg was completely shattered. Now, at this point, she'd um, she'd just arrived on the street. So she was still right. alive at this point, but she later died of her wounds. Right. And she said that um, her attacker, she described her attacker and she said his name. And her attacker was this kind, gentlemanly... Um, man that simply asked for her time. Mm. I just want your time, nothing else. Just want to pay for your time. Um, and uh, as they went up to his room, he moved with blinding speed and strength and pinned her arms to her sides. Then he started tearing at her bare skin with his teeth. Wow. And she named him as Shock Saint Germain. Now, is that Jacques or Shark? Jacques. Oh, Jacques. Jacques. Right, okay. Jacques. 
Jacques. Jacques. Right, okay. Should I put on my French accent? Yeah, if you could. <laughs> Jacques Saint-Germain. There you go, better. There yep. we go. And he's claimed to be, um, now Jacques Saint-Germain was um, uh, quite a prominent figure in New Orleans culture at the time. Right, okay. Um, he was claimed to be of French nobility. Um, right. And uh, he was very affluent, um, he hosting parties and mm. balls, et cetera, and okay. um, very much part of the social life mm. in New Orleans at that time. Hadn't been there for very like long. The, um, the stat. In exactly. that sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is where I think <clears throat> it's come from. The stat has yeah, come from. Right. Um, yeah. Now, his, apparently, his guests would notice that he never ate anything. Right. So he was always dining from empty plates um, or drinking from empty glasses, to quote right. Louis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I always drank red wine. Right. Or what or, seemed so we to thought, be yeah. red wine. Um, now, police attempted to question Saint Germain um, about the murder of this prostitute because, as I said, she mm. later died of her injuries. Yeah. Um, but they found his home completely empty. Well, not completely. There was some furniture left behind yeah, and yeah. whatnot. And, you know, you'd want, no, I don't need that bedside cabinet anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, more importantly, mm. were the contents of the cellar that was left behind. Oh, okay. Now, the cellar was filled with bottles of red wine, mm. shelves of it. Yeah. Now, when they later opened it up, because, you know, the police weren't quite so diligent yeah. back then, they yeah. were, oh, Oh, I'll have, a, I'll have a bottle of that. Of that. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, it turns out that it was a mixture of red wine and blood. Wow. Can't say whether or not it's human blood or animal blood. Yeah. But it was blood a mixture yeah. of blood. I like that. Now, um, Jacques Saint-Germain said that he was um, a descendant of Count Saint-Germain or, or Count de Saint-Germain, right. um, who is quite a mysterious figure mm. when I started looking into it. Um it seems like he was an um, an alchemist. Alchemist. <laughs> alchemist. <laughs> he was into alchemy. Alchemy. <laughs> alchemy. <laughs> He's alchemy. <laughs> yeah, he was into uh, alchemy. He was an alchemist um, from the 18th century in Paris, France. Right. Um, and he said to have been born in either the late 1600s mm. or the 1700s. Okay. Which, if he was listening carefully, would put him around about anywhere between 100 yeah. and 150 years old yeah. at the point in which he started coming into prominence in the 18th century. Now, what a lot of people were saying at the time with their accounts of, of, yeah. of the count um, yeah. was that he never seemed to age over the, like beyond 40. He mm. always looked around about 40 years old. Now, alchemical, alchem, ugh, what is wrong with me? Alchemy. Thank you. <laughs> of all the things you've pronounced I this know, morning, right? that's the one you're struggling with. That's the one I'm struggling with. Alchemy. <laughs> Take two. Take two. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Start again. Is, it, is anyone there? That's <laughs> yes, it. Fucking dope. So alchemy is reportedly uh, the route to immortality. Right. So it's about the um, transference of... <sighs> What we typically know of alchemy is that it's, a, it's the transference of a base metal into a special metal, so lead right. into gold. There's a lot of people that believe that alchemy is actually internal, that you are transcending your soul and body into a higher being. Right. Now, the Count, in, in particular, Count Saint-Germain, was often rumoured to be immortal, and he seemed like he, he liked this sort of attention, so yeah. he never confirmed or denied it. Right. Um, now, according to some of the stories, Jacques Saint-Germain looked incredibly similar to the Count. Now, there right. are um, there are images of our paintings of the Count out there. Yeah. And the the people in the, the early 20th century were saying, this Jacques looks exactly like him. Right. Like the, the, the similarities go beyond genetics sort of thing. Right, like You okay. could say like, okay. Well, in the sense that it could be him. That they're one of the same or... Exactly. Right. That it could actually be the same person. Yeah. right. Now, okay. apparently sightings occur of Saint-Germain in Orleans, even up until recent times. Right. So, but I can understand there being a law around the guy now mm. that he disappeared in like 1903 and that he keeps coming back yeah. to, keeps popping to up the streets yeah. of New Orleans. Well, he has now, to... Um, <clears throat> the reason for that, from, from what I know, is because he has to split his time between 
Bourbon Street and Sesame Street. <laughs> Sesame Street, yeah. <laughs> He's got to do all those counting, doesn't he? That's it, yes. There you go, that's where the legend comes from. You've got to that's count all the batties. You've got to count. One. One. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that's very good. Well, Sorry, I couldn't well, resist. Well done, Dad. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Dad joke extraordinary. Yes, oh, indeed, indeed. You're welcome. <laughs> but back, back to the. Cat. Sorry about that. Yep, go on. Uh, the- Just had to get out my system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it building up, like, like that meme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When you haven't told, <coughs> when you haven't told a, a dad joke in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but according to one story. Um, this is uh, with regards to the Count in particular over in, mm. in Paris. He became um, very, he became uh, I mean, in good favour with uh, King Louis XV right. and uh, was invited to his home for, for one of the parties, for one of the many parties that yeah. the, the French royalty would have. And this was in 1760. Okay. And this story comes from Countess von Gregory. Um, and she had started a, a, a conversation with Saint Germain. Right. Um, and uh, she, she remarked that she remembers 50 years ago meeting his father. Now, I remember meeting your father, you know, because you must be his son because mm. he's 50 years old and you look You're not remarkably that old. like yeah. the yeah. man that I met 50 years ago when yeah. she was a child. Right. And um, he surprised her when he said, no, no, I remember meeting you. That was me. That yeah. was me. <laughs> yeah. And she said that he didn't look a day over 40. Wow. And he joked then, it joked that he was over 100 years old, apparently. Wow, okay. Now, the legends of Saint Germain actually go back as far as 50,000 years ago. Bloody hell. Right, okay. So um, this was a new one for me, but apparently he was a high priest at the Violet Flame Temple. Okay. Um, the Violet Flame Temple is something I need to look into that actually because it seems to be that's had a, a recent resurgence. Right. Um, it's a very much a spiritual sort of thing. Mm. Violet being with regards to the chakras, Violet yeah. being the crown oh, chakra. Okay. Yeah. The most spiritual one. Yeah. Um, he was, he has been linked with being the prophet Samuel in the Old Testament. Okay. And Joseph, Mary's husband, right. Jesus' his, uh, early father. And you'll like this one. He's been linked with Merlin. Has he now? He's been linked with Merlin, the counsellor of King Arthur. I do like that. You're yeah. right. <laughs> also, um, staying on these shores, he's been linked with St. Saint, uh, Saint Alban, the first English martyr of Christianity in the third or fourth century. Um, right. Now, there's... The, he could be... If he's, if he's learnt the secrets of mm. alchemy and he's learnt the elixir of eternal life, then potentially that could have happened or yeah. it's a reincarnation sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and did you always go by the same name? So like when people were meeting him 50 plus years, like sort of prior and then seeing him again, it's was more, he going under the same It's more name to do or? with the physical description. Physical, right. Looks, okay. Um, and such. So it's almost like, like these, um, these new videos that keep coming out where, um, people suspect that Keanu Reeves is a, an immortal. Immortal, yeah. Because of the various different Paul Rudd traits. as well, because uh, he just Rudd's doesn't one. age. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Paul Rudd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. yeah he's very... Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. it's, it's mad. <laughs> we age because we're poor. That's yeah, what it is. Exactly, That's yeah. what it is. That's it, exactly. Because we're not super rich and we can't Absolutely. pay for our immortality. That's it. Um, but the most recent appearance, um, as, I, mm-hmm. as I alluded to earlier, was yeah. in 1972 in Paris, France. Wow. And it was a, a Richard uh, Chanfray. And he appeared on French television to prove that, to like, prove his claim. Right. Now, apparently, on TV, and I haven't been able to find this footage. Right. I haven't been able to find it, but apparently on TV, he turned lead into gold on a camp stove. Which would be pretty friggin' difficult to do because it wouldn't get anywhere any hot enough. For, for one thing. Uh, well, yeah, I would have thought. I mean, well, gold and lead have a, a relatively low melting temperature like for metal. Um, but I mean, for metal, yeah, but... On a camp stove, yeah. I'm not entirely sure about how... <clears throat> I mean, you've been to, you know, festivals and stuff. You can you can barely heat a can of beans on a bloody camp stove. Never <laughs> never mind change. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the if properties it's of metal or anything like that. Yeah, I, this yeah, is true. the thing. I couldn't yeah. find... I couldn't... For this, this particular... 
particular claim, I couldn't find any any video of it, any any clips, any or like an article from it, nothing, or nothing that I didn't wouldn't have to spend time translating out of French. Yeah, you know, um, but apparently this Richard Chanfray um, committed suicide in 1983. Oh wow! All right, potentially putting an end to the legend of mm. Count Saint Germain, but. I found that quite fascinating, really, that this this character mm. has popped up yeah. across time and has been linked with the idea of <coughs> drinking blood and yeah. and like if if that was the case, like with him attacking the prostitute, he would have to up sticks and leave pretty quickly. Yeah, very much along the same lines as um, yeah. Anne Rice's vampires yeah. in, in when they were in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I thought. I don't like that, yeah. Yeah, whether That's or not good. they're true. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I like that. That's a good um, story, yeah, one that I've not heard of. Mm. So. I mean, I've got, I've got another another story, but it's an actual historical account. But, oh, okay. yeah, let's cool. go into... Uh, into you want to go into the Bible? Donde esta? Donde esta? The Biblioteca. Um, yeah, so it's... Um, yeah, it comes straight out of uh, out of the Bible. Um, and this one tells the story of Lilith, mm-hmm. which... The mother of demons. Again, yeah, for vampire fans, you've probably heard um, heard the name quite prominently in, uh, and quite recently in uh, True Blood. Yep. She was like the sort of the, the head honcho, wouldn't she? Mm. And uh, Lucifer as well. Yeah. Hmm. Um, she's believed to not only be the first she-demon, but also the first wife of Adam, Um as in Adam and Eve. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you know that, but... Eve, Eve was not the first. No, she was not, no. Uh. Um, Lilith was uh, basically uh, banished from the Garden of Eden um, for not being willing to um, obey Adam. <laughs> basically, she wasn't going to be a good little wifey and she was, you know, strong-headed and wanted to kind of do her own thing and they didn't like that. Be gone, thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so she was, um, yes. Yeah, so she was banished from uh, from from Eden. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Just remember that. <laughs> yeah, you've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now the name um, Lilith is believed to be um, an Arcadian word um, meaning nightbird. Um, in other ancient texts, she's depicted as being a spirit or a demon. Um, she vowed never to return to the Garden of Eden and instead um, shacked up with the uh, Archangel Samuel. Um, as we know, he was the sort of non-Christian version of Satan. Mm. Basically, he, he was kind of, yeah, the big dog, apparently. Um, he was also responsible for... Um, the downfall of Adam and Eve. Um, cause it was him who introduced the snake and mm. all of that to it. So it was kind of hit. So off the back of this, he was oh, Samael. <coughs> Samael is, uh, I think, yes, the uh, the pronunciation. Yeah. Yes. Samael. Oh, is it so, right? Okay. Samael. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that guy. That geezer. <laughs> that, that geezer. Sammy. Sammy. Yeah. Sammy to his mates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, in uh, in Hebrew, um, the name Lilith um, can also mean night monster, which again would be quite apt for <laughs> something like vampires. <laughs> seen a few, seen, seen a, a few, few night monsters. <laughs> yes, yeah, plenty of Liliths. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one too many, if you ask me. But <laughs> uh, right on um, my street at two o'clock in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, hovering around Daryl's. Uh, <laughs> that was dirty for, burger. For a dirty burger. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she's believed to be um, also the earliest um, example and inspiration for um, vampires. Um, the myth states not that not only would she um, seduce men uh, and use their semen to create more demons, she would also feed off of their blood to regain her strength. And uh, this in part would lead to her killing her victims. Mm. The, um, so she's like the, the, the drain of the blood. The sort first of thing. succubus. So, sort of yeah, thing. basically, yeah. Excuse me. Um, now, the use of, um, I found out through lo- looking at this story, that the use of um, the crucifix um, in, in the folklore um, as a way to banish vampires um, came from um, this myth. Um, it was believed, I haven't got a, 
a sort of a time stamp, but Mark's, uh, Mark's? Monks would uh, sleep with their hands covering their genitals whilst holding a crucifix. <laughs> because, what a sad state of affairs. Because they were worried <laughs> that she would visit them in their sleep and basically uh, seduce them to, uh, you know, to sort of reproduce and then drain them of their blood. So they, wow. they thought that, yeah, sleeping with a crucifix in, over, their, holding uh, your uh, over their todger would, um, yeah, would stop them from, uh, well, stop that from happening. So that's the, that's the earliest account <laughs> of the it? crucifix being used. So. Well, the, 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 the head, like the monk, yeah. walks in and goes, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, protecting myself from Lilith. <laughs> yeah, I see, yeah. <laughs> What's your hands doing down there? Protecting myself from Lilith, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. honest. <laughs> what you got under there? What crucifix. was said about knocking? I'm trying to clean my room. <laughs> <laughs> you got a crucifix under there, of course. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you got a crucifix, so you're happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that story got about. Yeah, yeah, yeah that got twisted go. somewhat, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah they like, believe it. Honestly, go with this yeah, one, lads. Believed it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll get away with it. Just say it's a crucifix. <laughs> Maybe that's where morning glory comes from. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> yes, mate. That's yeah. exactly where it came from. I love that. Uh, I, yeah, I like that. That's quite funny. Um, but yeah, but in yeah, in all in all seriousness, <laughs> if we can be for a moment, that's oh, um, no chance. That's that, yeah, that's where they believe the um, yeah the use of the crucifix in vampire folklore to you know kind of keep them away or, or banish them. They reckon that's where it that's where it came from because that's the earliest um, and and most direct um, description of the use for that purpose in you know in in, in doing that. So. Um, the only one I couldn't find, just thinking about it actually, was um, garlic. Well, I know the and where it, that came from. Um, well, from what I understand, the the the, the ring of garlic cloves around the neck was mm. to repel the the smell of death. So, ah, okay, um, it was because garlic is such a strong scent, and obviously, <coughs> so it's decla- decaying flesh. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, very very strong scent. But if you mm. were to put like garlic underneath. Underneath your nose, basically. Yeah, you couldn't smell. Mm. Right, it's very okay. much similar sort of things to the uh, the, the plague masks. Um, so, you know, the the ones with the great big snouts that look like big like hook noses. Yeah, yeah, they would fill it with with herbs and and, and spices so right. that these doctors. That's were, all they would smell during the plague. Yeah, they instead of white people. Yeah, the physicians were able yeah. to go in there and actually do their thing without. Yeah you know, supposedly contracting mm. the virus or, or yeah. whatever, but more so so they can actually stand to go in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I just it just came to me that I realised that out of all the ones that we've kind of ticked off, mm. that was the one that I couldn't find anything yeah. particularly I mean, compelling I've, on. But yeah, I, I like that, that makes sense. Well, I read that in my um, vampire encyclopedia that I've had since <laughs> I was 17 years old. <laughs> yeah. I showed you that last night, didn't I? It's you like, did. It's like a great big, it's about a foot. Thick. Could bloody kill a man, that thing. If you threw it hard enough. <laughs> or kill a vampire with it, mate. That's <laughs> well, sure. Yeah, yeah. Get right round the bonds. <laughs> yeah. See you later, sunshine. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, so that's a bit of, uh, yeah, sort of religion for you in terms of, so we've got the, the sort of the first, you know, we've got Greek myth that brings us the first, you know, male vampire, I guess, in, you know, in, from their mythology. And then we've got, you know, we've got the good book that um, essentially introduces, yeah, the first, female vampire Sweet. or sort of succubus as you say yeah so yeah both well both in that case sides. then if you're finishing on, uh, on a female I shall yeah. finish on a female as well but, um, <laughs> as God intended <laughs> <laughs> my one is a historical case <laughs> moving on moving on <laughs> we've been very misogynistic in this one haven't we, oh, we Jesus have. <laughs> um, but yeah so I'll finish on um, Elizabeth Bathory um, huh? She was also nicknamed the Blood Countess, and yep. uh, she lived between uh, 1560 and uh, 1614. Right, and uh, she was a wealthy and powerful Hungarian noblewoman. Right, um, she, she had strong <laughs> ties. Good traditional Hungarian name. <laughs> yeah, I know. well, <laughs> let's come up the English version of it. I can't. Yeah. I, can't I can't remember. I didn't write it down, but I could have. Oh, she yeah. did actually have. A, she did. Yeah. Oh, okay. She did right, have right. a Hungarian name. <laughs> right. Okay. But you know, I'm just being lazy. <laughs> um, but she's um, 
Yeah, she has uh, strong ties to no um, royalty and nobility uh, mm-hmm. right across Europe. So okay. um, her uncle was the king of Poland, and right. her nephew was the prince of Transylvania. Oh. Mm. This is after his name wasn't Vlad, Vlad was it? Or Probably a Vlad. <laughs> Vlad the sixth or the seventh yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but in uh, sixteen ten, she was accused of serial murder and right. confined to a home, um, Castle Catis, right. um, and uh, remained there until her death in four years later. Now, oh, well, wow, right. Reportedly, she killed over six hundred victims, and the majority of them were virgin girls. Wow. Um, she's actually in the Guinness World Records for the most prolific female murderer. Jesus. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, she was, um, yeah, and like I said, <clears throat> this earned her the nickname of the Blood Countess. Right, okay. Um, but, uh, so to go into who she actually was, so Bathory was considered a very beautiful and well-educated girl and was engaged at the age of 11. Now, wow. at 15, she was then married. Um and her first child was born 10 years after that. Okay. Um, she gave birth to five children in total, but two of them died as infants. Right. Now, her husband was often away fighting the Ottoman Turks, um, and he died in 1604. Um, right. And Bathory took control of all the estate. So if he, so she got ties to Transylvania and her husband fought the Ottoman Empire... Was his name Vlad? <laughs> no, no. That seems awfully uh, c- coincidental, yeah, doesn't it? Um, uh, his name was um, Nadasi. Nadasti. Nadasti. Oh, okay. So he was Count Nadasti. Right. Um, he was a Hungarian as well. Right. But the that whole region were all fighting against the Ottomans. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And... Uh, so she was accused of a catalogue of crimes against uh, female servants and uh, minor noble women. Um, most of the alleged attacks took place after she was widowed, so after uh, 1604. Right. right. Um, her cruel treatment earned her a reputation. She'd have young women stripped naked and forced into freezing ice baths for pro- pro- prolonged periods of time. Right. Um, she was a bit of an expert at torture. In particular. Right. So okay. going to go into a little bit of it. It right. might make go you on cringe. Him. Yep, go on him. She would drive nails under the fingernails and toenails of her <sighs> victims. Right, okay. She'd cut off their noses or their lips. Um, she'd burn the flesh, including the genitals, and she would bite the shoulders and breasts of her victims as well. Christ almighty. After killing, she would either bathe or consume the blood to retain her youthful appearance. Oh, okay. Hence, so, yeah, uh, in drinking the, the blood. And, of, yeah. uh, okay. The blood, blood countess. countess. Yeah. She was um, only investigated, though, right. um, once she started assaulting minor noblewomen. Um, so acts against servants and peasants weren't a crime. Oh, shit. Mm. And uh, because of her nobility as well, mm. um, she wasn't imprisoned. She was just confined to... A house. Castle. Right. That's yeah. it. So they basically, they gave her, they, they, um, they prosecuted some of her servants that were complicit in her acts. So yeah. they, they were the ones that were like bringing, bringing the girls in yeah. sort of thing and disposing right. of the bodies. And um, one of the ways that they would dispose of the bodies apparently was they would leave it out, the carcass out in the, the forest and cover it with honey. So the, oh, and the, hope the, something would eat it. Something. Yeah, that's something, something, yeah. yeah. I thought you said yeah. someone. No, something, something would eat it. <laughs> yeah, just someone knocking like about. Peasants come Ooh, honey. Oh, honey, yeah, I could do with a bit Ooh, of that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on, Moorish. <laughs> yeah. I love honey on You a tempt corpse. me, sir, you tempt me. Love <laughs> honey on a carcass, Moorish. <laughs> um, but yeah, I found that really, yeah, really interesting that yeah. there was this idea that it was always young girls as well. So either mostly prepubescent that she would do these things too. I suppose, yeah, if you're trying to retain your youth, I guess it would be young, you know, yeah. youngsters, wouldn't it? I so guess. It'd, be, it'd be the idea of the, of the torture, the extreme torture, and then the draining of the blood in order to bathe in or consume yeah. it themselves. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but I've got a bit of a theory about this oh, here we go. as well. Go on. Right. Getting off the fence. Oh, yeah. no, not, not quite. <laughs> not quite. But I've got a theory about who Elizabeth Bathory might be. Um, oh, okay. And she might not have died in 1614. Okay. 
but she may have survived right and she may have run for office in the United States in 2016 2016 but she was born in 1560 right okay go on then I'm just I'm not I'm not naming anyone I'm not naming anyone yeah 2016 she may have run for office in 2016 I can't, the only you're one I can think of is Clinton, but... Oh, is that what you're talking about? Shush! We're not talking about Clinton. Oh, we're not? Are we going to get cancelled now? We're going to get cancelled. <laughs> I'm just going to say frazzle drip. I'm just going to leave that out there, guys. <laughs> right, okay. That's completely lost you You can't right just there, leave that. Yeah, it has, because I've not heard of oh, that. Well, yeah. I'll explain it later. Yeah, on. yeah, okay. I'm not going to explain it on air. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> wow, okay. That's some... Uh, yeah. Mm. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. I'm going to have to do digging on that then. Yeah, yeah. contents of someone's um, laptop. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Right. May okay. have exposed a video. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I'm not saying anything. Right. But I'm okay. just saying that maybe. A bit of conspiracy there. I like it. It's happened. Yeah. And um, maybe these activities have continued. Right. Okay. I'm not saying anything. I think you're saying enough <laughs> or not enough as the case may be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just thought, um, right, okay. yeah, I found that. I, I, I just thought it was brilliant. That story. Yeah. That, I like that. Catherine yeah. Especially with that little, yeah. The little grenade that you uh, threw at the end. Oh, yeah. I don't want to say anything. Well, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so you pulled out the pin, you've dropped it and you just walked I'm off. I was just going like, to walk away. <laughs> Let people look nice. into that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I suppose, um, on that bombshell. <laughs> On that bombshell, excuse me, um, we might as well uh, get off the fence, won't we? I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. For yeah. what? Um, Are you, you up to it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, but there, yeah, it really got me that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, so. Um, yeah. <sighs> the idea of the vampire, I'm very much along the same sort of lines as it, it's more of a psychological sort of thing, especially today. What with its yeah. prominence within literature, pop culture. Yeah. Um, uh, stories, films, songs, everything. Yeah, like it's. Uh, yeah, I think it, it's tied to real world practices, uh, but but yeah, as you say, has come from like you know either like a condition or ill mental health, like that type of thing, and then that's what's kind of romanticised the whole mm. the whole vision. But yeah, I think it's very much um, confined to myth um, and, and legend in terms of like the vampire as as we know it um but yeah i do appreciate that it does come from a very kind of real world background with mm. the various conditions and you know mental conditions and you know physical and whatever else that have kind of throughout history kind of played a part to right. influencing a lot of the criteria and, and sort of characteristics that we now know as a vampire <clears throat> i think that's kind of more, that's where I'm landing anyway, I think. Because I, I, there, there wasn't any, you know, real world, <clears throat> you know, mm. kind of sightings, uh, yeah, aside from, you know, the couple that you obviously offered up. Well, but, but the, I don't think there's the, really anything with enough. The real world sightings, mate, it, <clears throat> in order to try and find that needle in a haystack, you have to go through so much in yeah. vampire fan fiction. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Uh, you'd have to, you would have, it would take decades. To go through <laughs> yeah, it, all, yeah. To to try and find to pick out the actual, yeah, yeah, something that had any sort of yeah. substance to it as a as a as an account, yeah, rather than it being a story, because you can usually tell, you can usually yes. tell yeah, about yeah. the way in which so, if someone's recounting something rather than telling the story, even mm. when it's in written form, yeah, you can kind of tell based on the language that's being used, yeah, um, and <sighs> that I've read some shit. <laughs> put it that way. I can only imagine. It's like yeah. some Fifty Shades of Red shit. Oh, you know, God. that like... Yeah. Just that, vamp porn, basically, yeah. Ridiculous, mate. It's, yeah. And it's so poorly for written me. as well. And it's just like... Oh. Usually is, unfortunately, yeah. But it just gets so popular. It's what infuriates yeah. me. I mean, I'm... It was so you know, bad, I'm, I couldn't even get off to it. Oh, right, you know? okay. Well, I mean, that's not surprising. <laughs> that, that bad, yeah. That, <laughs> and that ain't, that ain't difficult. <laughs> so... <laughs> but, no, it's just like... Yeah, I mean, for the... For the, the I love the, the the modern vampire thing. Yeah, absolutely. I've, yeah. I'm fascinated with it, <clears throat> and I think it is because of that psychological aspect of it all. No, because you you exercise those demons that you experience on a day 
day to day, like trying to murder your boss. Yeah. Or you got there's that um, this the 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 sexy um, persona mm. of the vampire. You know, the whole yeah. Sh- like the sharing of fluids and all yeah. that sort of stuff. You know, to get graphic. Yeah. Um, and whatnot, <laughs> but it's there is a, a very very strong sexual element to it, mm. and that is incredibly enticing to people. Yeah, that's why people oh, yeah, love definitely. this whole idea of, of the vampire. That's why people continue to like read this sort of stuff, and why, yeah, people sadly continue to write this shit because <laughs> it, it, you know it, people enjoy it. Hey, I know? put my hands up. I did some of that <clears throat> shit when I was in me, me teens as well. Like, I thought I'd write down some of that. Vampire. Did you really? Yeah, oh, mate, it's fucking <laughs> awful. I mean, I know no, it that was awful from read. From, <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Oh. <laughs> I burnt, I burnt that shit, burnt that shit yeah. many years ago. Well, sadly, there are, there are people online that are still uh, sharing it. So, yeah, um, yeah so it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. But, but yeah. But yeah, but no, but that's, that's kind of where, you know, in a, in a sort of a nutshell, because I guess we kind of come off the, the fence as we have done recently, um, you know, throughout the episode. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, there's not, I don't think there's really much else to no, kind of say on it, really. I, th- I think it's, yeah, confined to kind of myth and legend for a reason. Mm. Um, but there is a very real-world element behind it in terms of the, you know, kind of inspiration and a lot of what has been drawn from, yeah, physical and mm. kind of mental conditions that have that have kind of played a part. And, yeah, as you say, it's then been romanticised and yeah. put through Hollywood and, you know, a, no- a number of times... <clears throat> to end up where we are sort of now. So, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah we're, we're, that's me. we're interested to hear what you guys think. As get, always, get yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think about what the, the, the historical vampire is, what the yeah. modern vampire is. Um, let what us does know it mean what, to you. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite vampire flicks? Please, yeah. please don't say twilight. <laughs> Whatever you do. If you're, if you're going to say anything other than twilight, then we want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So guys, you know yeah. where we are. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube. Leave a like, a comment, a share as yeah. well. But yeah, get in touch. Let us know what your favourite um, part of the vampire mythology is mm. um, and whether or not you think that it could actually be a real world thing. Yeah. What's your theory on it? What side of the fence are you on? Let yeah. us know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, do you agree with us or do you not? Yeah. Or, yeah. Offer up your own theory. Indeed. So uh, in closing, guys, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having us back. Yeah, thanks for having us back. (laughs) Good to be back. Yeah, Yeah, right. Been a little bit. It's been a while. Been yeah. It's been it's been a hectic couple of weeks, and uh, getting back into this again. Yeah, I love it. Nice bit of escape, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So um, yeah, thanks again to our patreons. Yeah, James and Justin. Thank you. Thanks very much for your continued support. And uh, don't forget to go on to the uh, buythatmerch.com forward slash cryptid dash ramblers. Yeah. and uh, or you can find us on the drop down menus and, and yeah. such. Go check out our merch. Go support us in that way. But yeah. the easiest way to support is to like and comment and share. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very much appreciated it takes, if you yeah. could do that, guys. It'd be brilliant. Absolutely. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And remember, like the great Van Helsing once said, I want you to believe, to believe in things you cannot. I like that. <laughs>